So I'm going to talk for the first uh, 10 or 15 minutes, kind of uh, go over some of the ideas of the degreeless InfoSec career path. And a lot of people think that you can't get into information security or cybersecurity or whatever you want to call it these days. They keep changing the name on us. It went from uh, information security to information assurance, and now we call it cybersecurity. So um, what we want to talk about is what are some of the ways that you can get into this career field? And now the two main ones that people always bring up are either you got to go to college and get a degree, or you got to go out and get a bunch of certifications. And those seem to be where most people think that they have to start out. So let's talk about those two first, and then we're going to go into some other options that aren't necessarily as uh, clear cut as those two. When we talk about those two things, a degree and certifications, uh, first, before we talk about that, I want to be honest with you and tell you where I come from. Um, I am a college professor, so obviously I think degrees are good. Uh, I teach at the undergraduate level with the community college, I teach with another college at the undergraduate level at the bachelor's degree, and I teach with another college at the master's degree. So yes, I think there is value in a degree, and we can talk about that as well. Um, but there's also value in those certifications. And then there's also value in not doing those two things. So we're going to talk about all three of those. Um, first, what is a degree good for? Well, most people are going to tell you you have to get a degree to get a job, and that's simply not true. Um, a degree is going to give you foundational knowledge. So if you go and get an IT degree or a computer science degree, or even now there's colleges offering a cybersecurity degree, uh, which is really just a bunch of certifications packaged up into a, a degree program, uh, what is that really going to buy you? Well, it's going to buy you a lot of student loans for one. It's going to cost a lot of money and a lot of time. A standard degree is going to cost you two to four years if you go for an associate's or a bachelor's degree program. And that's a big time commitment just before you even get into the career field. So is a degree worth it? Well, sometimes. There are some companies, some larger companies, don't want to hire people without a degree. Now, why is that? Well, because when you go and get a degree at a college, you're going to learn a lot of stuff. And the funny thing is most of the stuff you're going to learn is not necessarily even tied to the job you're going to do. Let's take a bachelor's degree, which is a four-year degree. In the United States where I live, it's 120 credit hours. Usually you do about 30 credit hours per year, 15 credit hours per semester, which equates to about five classes. Now, out of those 120 credit hours for the standard bachelor's degree, 60 of them are considered general education. Now, what does that really mean? Well, that's things like English and math and physics and psychology and philosophy and a whole bunch of stuff that really doesn't affect your world as a computer science major or an IT or a cybersecurity major. And so we spend a lot of our time in these programs trying to learn this general education that is good knowledge and it's good to learn how to think, but it's not necessarily directly applicable to your job. Um, when I went to college about 20 years ago, the first time, uh, I actually dropped out of college after about a year and a half because I was a computer science major and for the first year and a half, I got to take one computer science course, one introductory to programming course. Everything else was English and psychology and sociology and math and chemistry and I didn't want that. I wanted to learn computers, right? That's why I went in for a computer science degree in the first place. So degrees have their place, but they're not necessarily the end-all be-all. Now. Let's talk about certifications for a second. And certifications kind of go the exact opposite way. And what does a certification really test you on? Well, a certification is going to test you on a body of knowledge. Uh, for instance, if you're doing the a exam, it's going to be your hardware and software knowledge to be able to do a, uh, a, a equivalent of somebody who's been in the business for about a year. If you're a Network Plus, it's going to cover networking and TCP IP and different security protocols and routers and switches and what each of those do. If you're doing Security Plus, you're going to talk about security protocols, right? If we talk about CISSP, it's very wide and deep. It's more of a management certification. Um, if we're going to talk about ethical hacking, CEH is the one that people go for, a certified ethical hacker, that's going to teach you the concepts of penetration testing. Now, as a guy who's done penetration testing, I will tell you, what you learn in CEH is not applicable to the real marketplace. The stuff they're going to teach you in CEH is maybe the method is good, but the tools they talk about, that's not what we use. Right, And so things like OSSCP are much better. Um, but anyway, that, that gets you off on a different tangent, but we're talking about certifications in general. Some are very valuable, some are not. Now, as somebody who's trying to hire, their, some, hire somebody into the InfoSec field, or into the cybersecurity field, or information assurance field, or even the IT field in general, if you're talking IT service management, what do we want to look for? Well, some companies, they're looking for degrees. And some companies, they're looking for certifications. And some are looking for both. Um, you may have heard there's a huge shortage of cybersecurity personnel. Um, now, if there's such a shortage, why aren't more people getting hired? Because there's lots of people who are out of work and want a job. 
Well, it comes down to qualified candidates. And some companies are asking for qualifications that are extremely high. And why is that? Well, part of it's the HR people, the human resources, don't know what they're talking about or what they're looking for when they're trying to hire those positions. So they start going, well, I need a cybersecurity guy. And so for somebody to do this cybersecurity job, I need somebody who has a bachelor's degree in computer science, a master's degree in cybersecurity, and the CISSP, CEH, and CNDA. And if they don't have all that stuff, I'm not even going to look at them. Well, to find that unique uh, unicorn, that very special person, is challenging. There's not enough of those people out there. And so they need to start widening their aperture and start looking a little bit broader. Um, and we'll talk about that as we go through of how you can kind of catch their attention. So that's kind of the two sides, right? We have the degree, which is a full four-year rigorous course of study. And then you have these certifications where, uh, you know, how, how in-depth are they? Well, I teach a lot of uh, boot camps for A+, Network+, uh, Security+, uh, Ethical Hacking. And in 40 hours, I could sit you in a classroom Monday through Friday for eight hours a day, and I can teach you to pass that exam. Now, at the end of that week, in the end of that boot camp, you will be certified A plus, Net plus, Security plus, or CEH because I can make I can make that happen. Um, my classes we've had 98, 99 percent uh, success rate of getting people through in one week or less. Now, does that mean you're certified to do the job? Well, you have the certification, but do you have the knowledge? Probably not. I've taught you how to beat a test. I didn't tell you how to actually do the job because it, I didn't have enough time to do that in a 40 hour class, right? I had enough to teach you what's in the book and get you through. But you have to take it a step further and actually be able to start showing that you have some ability to do the job. And that's why employers kind of, for a long time, they wanted certs because they could say, oh, this person has this level of knowledge, which is great. But what they found is they were hiring a bunch of people who had certs because they went through all these boot camps, but they didn't know how to do the job because all they did was learn how to pass a test. And that's a problem. So now they kind of went the other way and they said, well, at least I know if they went to a four-year degree that they have at least four years of playing with some kind of computers, but even that's not true. I've met a lot of guys who come from a four-year degree background that might have a computer science degree or a cybersecurity degree or a networking degree or a IT management degree, and they can't even install Windows on a machine and hook it to a network because they're academic. They're not practical. So how do we solve that problem, and how do we break into this career field? Well, that's where we got to start getting a little bit more unique. Um, I'll tell you about you know the way I broke into the career field. Uh, back in the late 90s, nobody wanted to hire me, right? I was a student. Uh, I was a college student in a computer science program, and no one really wanted to hire me for more than about 5 or $6 an hour, which was minimum wage back then. Um, I didn't want to work for 5 or $6 an hour, so I didn't, and I chose to do something different. And what I ended up doing was I actually started my own company. Um, I went and I started doing field service type work, IT service management type work for small businesses and home businesses. And so I put an ad in the paper and I went on Craigslist and those type of things. I started saying, hey, I'll do anything you guys need on your computers and I'll fix them. Um, I can build websites for you. I can design networks for you. Any of that type of stuff, which is stuff I knew how to do because I've learned it uh, as I was getting these books. At the time, I didn't have a degree. I didn't have a certification. And I was able to get those jobs because the end user doesn't care if you have those certifications or degrees. They care, can you do the job, right? IT and cybersecurity is not something that is centrally licensed by your states. Uh, and again, I'm talking about in the United States. I'm not exactly sure on the uh, when you start getting outside the U.S. If, if that's a regulated industry. I can't imagine it is because I think the U.S. is probably one of the more regulated places in the world. Um, but in the U.S., you have to be regulated and licensed by the state to be a plumber or to be an electrician. But you don't to be a cybersecurity guy. You don't to be an IT management guy. And so you could start your business tomorrow. You could print out some business cards and you could start working. Now, why do I say start doing that? Well, because when you go to apply for that job, once you've gotten those certifications and you try to apply for that, that first uh, security analyst job, and they go, well, what experience do you have? Well, I've been fixing and repairing computers for the last six months, or I've been fixing and repairing and building networks for the last year uh, for these small businesses. That shows them that you at least have some knowledge of what you're doing. So that's one way you can go about it, and you can make some money while you're doing it. I actually made really good money doing that. Uh, because I was making 50, 60, 70 bucks an hour helping small businesses out and they were happy and I was happy and we were all doing great. The next way you can do it is you can actually volunteer someplace. And I know that sounds weird, right? You want to give away your time, give away your, your skill set. Um, but it's some way to document on paper if you work for an organization for a certain amount of time, even in a volunteer capacity, that shows you have experience now when you go to that hiring manager. Because hiring managers are all about looking at the resume. 
These are HR people. They're not IT people. So they're looking at it and they're going, he did this for this amount of time in this level of position, or he has this degree or this certification. That's how they figure out whether or not you fit the bill. Um, and then if you get past that guy, you get to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about and you go to your technical interview. So that's another way I've seen it done. So if you're involved with your church, maybe you could talk to them and be like, hey, I'd like to work on your IT systems for you. I'll do it free of charge. I know what I'm doing. And they may let you do that. Um, or a Boys and Girls Club or any, any nonprofit. They love to find people who are willing to work for free. And even in the cybersecurity realm, get involved in some of these volunteer organizations. Uh, one of the places that I've helped out uh, is in our area, we have a place called Women's Cyber Jitsu. Um, and they are a women's group because in cybersecurity, if you didn't know this, 89% of the people in cybersecurity are guys, you know, mostly white men, uh, and we, we dominate the industry. Um, and this organization, their whole goal is getting more women into cybersecurity. So what they have done was they have set up different training programs to help people get those certs and get on the job experience and start helping them build their resumes and helping them uh, build and take apart networks and get some hands-on experience. And they needed people to help teach those classes. And they reached out to me and I worked with them for a while doing that. Um, and, and you know, we're trying to make that trend where we can start getting more females into the field as well. And you can find an organization like that and work with them, right? So that's another way that you can start kind of breaking into the industry as you start working through that. So it's just a couple of different ways I wanted to kind of start with of, you know, what is a degree and, and why do people value it? Because I know when I'm talking with a lot of you guys, I'm in a lot of chats with you guys on, on Facebook and the different groups there, especially the InfoSec 101 group. Um, and we talk about this and people are always like, you know, there's such a glut of jobs and nobody's hiring. Why can't I get a job? Well, part of that is you got to get past that hiring manager. And they're looking for specific things. They're looking for that experience. They're looking for those certs. They're looking for those degrees. Now, do you have to get every cert that's out there? Heck no. And don't do it. They're expensive. They're time consuming. It'll waste your time and money. But you do want to hustle and get the ones that are important, especially once you narrow down to what it is you want to do. Same thing with the degree. Don't get a degree just for a degree's sake. Get a degree because it's going to open the door where you want to go to. And while you're working on that degree, get a job in the field. I don't care if you have to get third shift, meaning midnight to 8 a.m., doing help desk support for the local telecom company. If it has something to do with IT, get your foot in the door. Start doing something because it'll start building that resume. 